Hi friends, welcome. My name is Brittany and I'm so grateful that you've decided to join me today. Before we get started, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so. It lets me know that you've been enjoying the content and that you want to see more. Also, if you like this video at the end, please do hit the like button, the thumbs up, maybe even comment. I love your feedback and I love knowing that you're enjoying what I'm putting out there. With that being said, I'm excited to offer you this video that a lot of you have been requesting, so thank you for reaching out. We'll be focusing on the region of the lower back. Today I have a blanket at my mat, so feel free to grab one or perhaps a towel, something you can use as cushion um, later on. Otherwise, when you're ready, we're going to get started on our back. Start to make your way down to your back. Just nice and gentle, use the arms for support, the hands to guide you down. We're going to start the practice here on our back by taking the feet out wide, about mat's distance. Just let the knees rest on one another and see if you can glide the shoulder blades down the back. By having the knees knocked together and the feet go wide, you should feel your lower back, your lumbar spine, your sacrum pressing into the earth. So go ahead and find that. And from here, you have a choice whether you want to take the arms out wide. Something I really like to do in the beginning of a practice is take one hand to the belly, one hand to the heart, and like actually just feel the breath flowing in and out. So find what feels good to you, maybe take it somewhere else. Wherever you choose to be, I invite you to gently start to close down the eyelids and start to travel inward. It's like a cleansing breath together to arrive. Deep breath in through the nose. And sigh out the mouth. Let's do that again. Big deep breath, filling all the way up with air. And letting it go through the mouth. Just returning to your natural rhythm of breath. Allowing your body to settle into the earth. And just noticing how you feel today. Since this practice is focusing on the region of the lower back, sending your awareness there first. How does your lower back feel today? This is a great practice to do, not only if you have lower back pain, but also to prevent it. So these postures you can come back to on a regular basis, and I highly encourage you to do so. Just allowing the breath to flow as you continue bringing your awareness to the rest of the body. Noticing how different areas feel here in this shape. Noticing the thoughts that you've brought with you to your mat today. And just letting them be. Allowing the breath to flow in its natural rhythmic state as you just continue to arrive and settle in. Feel your lower back getting heavy with each and every breath as it lightly just presses into the earth below you, resting on the floor. here. And then we'll slowly just start to flutter our eyelids open, maybe smile. And we're going to peel the knees apart and start to pick the feet up. So let's all start to clasp the hands either in front of the shins or if you have more space maybe 
grab opposite elbows, but this might be a lot for you right now, so maybe just keep the fingers clasped, and we're gonna draw the knees into the chest. This is a nice time to kind of wiggle the toes, rotate out the ankle. In Sanskrit, this is called apanasana, knee to chest pose, and even just the act of doing this is really good for your lower back. If you want to add a little bit more, you might choose to gently rock side to side, massaging the muscles in the lower back, massaging your spine, your kidneys. Some of you might choose to increase the curvature of the spine by lifting the forehead perhaps drawing the forehead towards the knees and maybe when you do that maybe the hands do end up grabbing opposite elbows if that feels okay and holding here for a couple breaths in this tiny little ball shape keeping the face relaxed the breath flowing For those that had the shoulders lifted, the forehead towards the knees, let's all come back. And let's just hold here, knee to chest pose, for five cycles of breath. Try to soften the shoulder blades down the back. So instead of us lifting up towards the legs, we're drawing the legs towards us. So do your best. Reminding yourself to just meet yourself wherever you're at today. No judgment, no expectation. And just keep breathing. Breathing the intention that we're sending love into the lower back. Bringing our full awareness there. two breaths here. On the next exhalation, perhaps sighing it out the mouth, making a ha sound. Good. From here, we're going to release the feet down to the earth. And we're just going to do a couple bridge pulses going up and down. And you don't need to make them very high like you normally would in bridge. It's really just articulating through the spine and moving the pelvis gently up and down to help find some mobility here in the lower region of the spine. So to get into this, your feet are about hips distance apart, toes are pointing forward. And you can start by just having the palms closer to the side if it's easier for you to walk the hands wider, that's fine. If you want more of a challenge, maybe palms facing up. But again, this is about being more restorative. So just find what feels right to you. If you want, you can even hold the outer edges of your mat. Today, I'm gonna to choose palms down. From here, keeping your head down, neck long, lightly press into the feet. And as you inhale, start to lift the hips. But remember, we're not going to 100%, so you don't need to push really high. Try to keep the glutes soft. And then exhale, lower down, slowly one vertebrae at a time. So really imagine, envision your spine. And really articulate it like a wave. Let's do that again. Inhale, pressing up. Exhale, guide it down. Tailbone last. Three more times. Inhale, pressing into the feet, lifting the hips. Exhale, ripple down, tailbone touches the mat, last. Twice more, inhale. And exhale, coming down. Good, once more, inhale, lifting up. And exhale, ripple down. Good, from here, widen the arms, maybe palms facing up, almost like you're opening up your wings really wide, or you're gonna give someone a big hug. And then from here, open up the feet a little wider, so go a little wider than hips distance. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, just drop both knees to the right, and let's actually just scoop the hips over to the left slightly. That'll help us stack our hips a little bit easier. So a spinal twist. 
So the knees are staggered, the feet are staggered. Option here to look over to the left if that feels okay in your neck. Or maybe we just keep the gaze neutral or you can look over to the right. If it feels okay in your hips here, then maybe take that right ankle, lift it up and just cross it over the top of the left thigh, adding a little bit of weight here and then twist. What's more important is that your shoulder blades are on the ground so your upper back is grounded and the twist is really coming from your belly button down. Spinal twists have many benefits, one of which is to increase mobility in the region of the spine, especially the lower back. Oftentimes due to excess sitting, our lower back becomes flattened and we start to lose the natural curvature of our spine, which inevitably causes tension pain. So spinal twists are a really great way to help alleviate that, increasing mobility. Take another round of breath here. If the ankle is crossed on top, let's release it. And we bring the knees back up to center. We'll just take it to the other side. So first, let's actually just start by shifting the hips to the right side of the mat, drop them down, and then the knees fall to the left. If you need to take something underneath the knees, that's fine for support, maybe that blanket or towel. Otherwise, just work on letting the knees fall into space and let gravity do the work. If you did on the other side, you might choose to do it here, lifting the left ankle and lightly placing it on top of the right thigh, right above the knee. So again, if that's too much, then just release the heel, the ankle back down. Remember, you can always pad the bottom knee with a blanket or towel. Maybe you choose to look over to the right fingertips. Maybe the gaze stays neutral or over to the left. Each breath is like a little love note to your body. Relaxing the face, and softening the jaw. One more cycle of breath here. And then we slowly start to release the ankle back down, bring the gaze back up to center as the knees come back up to the center. We scoot the hips back to the middle of the mat. And let's pick the feet up again and give yourself another hug so that pose we did earlier, knee to chest pose. And just like I offered you earlier, if it feels good to you, you might rock side to side. You can even rock front to back if that feels good. Or maybe we lift the forehead and come into that tiny ball shape. Wherever you choose to be, be fully there. Take two more breaths. And come back down. So before we shift into our next set of shapes, let's first come into Shavasana for a moment, extending the legs. And just coming into this resting position for a few cycles of breath, just to notice how the first few shapes that we took in the practice made you feel. This is too much on your lower back with the legs extended, then just rebend the knees. Just like we started, let the knees rest on one another, and the feet can go out wide. Focusing on your breath. As you continue sending your awareness to the region of your lower back.
Good, very slowly start to wiggle your fingers, your toes, bringing a little bit more energy to the mat. Slowly start to open your eyes. Let's re-bend the knees if they're not already there. Pick the feet up once again, clasp the fingers in front of the shins, and let's all do Start to wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, bring a little bit more energy back to the mat. Go ahead, opening the eyes, rebending the knees. Let's pick the feet up once again, but this time the hands are going to come to the back of the thighs. We're going to start rocking and rolling front to back for a few breaths and then come up to a seat. So when you're ready, just start to rock and roll. This is also a nice practice to do, massaging the spine. Also, if you're low in energy, this is kind of nice to do in the morning. One more breath. And then rock all the way up to a seat, crossing your ankles, and I'll just turn to face you here. Good, so hopefully you're coming up to a seat, some type of cross-legged position, whatever works for you. And if you need to, we have the blanket nearby, hopefully the towel. What I'm gonna offer you is to actually just maybe sit up on it. So oftentimes when our hips are feeling tight and also if our knees are feeling a little sensitive, when you elevate your seat, you sit up a little higher, it helps your pelvis tilt forward and this can help lengthen out your spine. All right, so coming to your comfortable seat, I invite you to bring your hands towards your knees, draw the shoulder blades down the back, sitting up tall. If you feel comfortable to close your eyes, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, just take a nice gentle gaze down. Pause here for a moment as we just acknowledge now we are seated. So making that transition from our back all the way up. And just noticing what's present here. Just allowing the breath to flow. And again, just treating each and every breath like a little love note to your body. Thanking yourself for being here today, for making this time. Let's take a cleansing breath together. Inhale through the nose, feeling all the way up. Feel yourself sit up even taller. And a big open mouth sigh out. Good. Your eyes can open if you wish. Otherwise, just keep them gently closed and your hands are on your knees. And we're gonna move through some spinal movements here, some seated cow and cats, something I really enjoy doing to help stretch through the back body also helps invigorate the front of the body as well. So together with the hands on the knees, we lightly press into the knees and we inhale, so to lift the chest, so lean forward, open the heart, feel the shoulder blade draw down the back, and maybe you choose to look up or maybe the eyes stay closed. But feel this opening in the center line of the body, the front part of your body, and then exhale, we'll start to round through the spine. We slowly start to lean back. We have the hands on the knees for support, and now we start to curve our spine, chin comes to chest, and you should feel a nice stretch along the back side of your body, moving up the center line. So that's the movement. So finding your groove, moving at your pace, inhale, opening up the front body, arching the back, and then the exhale gently guides you back as you round. So we'll do this a few more times, flow with your breath, each inhale, opening up the front body. Exhale, opening up through the back of the body. And if you feel called to hold something a little longer, always listen into your body, meet yourself where you're at and honor that. Your body's speaking to you. So by maybe holding longer or maybe flowing a little faster, whatever it is, however you decide to respond, that's you having an intimate conversation with your own body. And to me, that is the heart of the practice. Deep listening. Keep flowing. Last two rounds of your seated cow and cat, just enjoying the movement. Now we'll all slowly, slowly start to meet back up in a seated position. You can have the palms facing down, signifying more grounding, or perhaps maybe you shift the palms facing up as a sign of receiving, or maybe somewhere else. Take a deep breath in through the nose, fill up. 
Out the mouth, let it go. Slowly start to flutter your eyelids open. All right. So here, if you're in the cross-legged position, go ahead and switch the cross of your legs. If you need to adjust the flesh away from the sitting bones, you can refold the blanket, whatever you need. And we're gonna do some seated spinal twists. So together, inhale, reaching up through the fingertips, lengthening out through the sides of the body. And then exhale, take your right hand behind you. Stay up on the fingertips for support of your spine. And then exhale, just crossing the left arm over the body and lightly just place the left hand on the top or to the side of that right thigh, but not your knee. Try not to hold your knee. Inhale to lengthen out through the crown of the head, sit up tall. And then exhale very gently, start to twist to the right. We'll do that a couple more times. Imagine a spiral staircase. So big breath, inhale. Exhale, twisting from the belly. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist from the ribs and the upper chest. Do that once more. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, twisting a little higher up. Perhaps maybe the neck starts to come into the picture and maybe look over to the right over the right shoulder, but don't force it. Good, very slowly start to unwind, bring the gaze, shoulders, chest, pause. Take a moment here, close your eyes. It's so important to take time in between each shape to kind of just notice differences from right to left, from the part that side of your body that you did, the side that you didn't, and then we'll balance it out. Deep breath in through the nose, sighing it out the mouth. All right, opening the eyes, maybe with a smile. Let's do it on the other side. So inhale, reaching through the fingertips. If it's okay in your neck, you can even look up. And then exhale, take it to the left. So now the left fingertips travel behind you, close to the lower back, right hand crosses over. Remember, we're not grabbing the knee. Big breath, inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, gentle twist to the left. So starting from the region of the belly, and we work our way up like a spiral staircase. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, ribs. Big breath, inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, the chest, the shoulders start to turn. Once more, big breath, inhale, lift through the crown of the head, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, twisting a little deeper, maybe sending the gaze over the left shoulder if that feels okay in your neck. Take another breath here, holding the twist. And hold again. Good. Returning back to center, bring the gaze first. Shoulders, chest, close your eyes. Whatever position you want to take your palms in after that. And just checking in with how each side of your body feels. slowly start to open the eyes. Good. All right, so friends, we're gonna transition to hands and knees now. If you have sensitive knees, feel free to pad your knees with the blanket or the towel, otherwise just move it. I have onion on my mat for some reason. Onion peel. <laughs> or the skin of an onion, that's strange. All right, anyways, coming to hands and knees, you just move that blanket off to the side. So spread through the fingers, we're coming into tabletop. Oh, that was fun. Take the hips over the knees, you can always tuck your toes if you want, but today I'm gonna to choose to come to the tops of the feet. Press the earth away. So earlier we did this in a seated variation, and now we return to the more traditional form of cow and cat, a really nice way to move through the spine, especially when you're in that rounded position of cat, you'll really feel that nice stretch lengthening out of the lower back. So here we go. Inhale, dropping the belly. Slowly start to arch the back, so send your tailbone to the sky, Glide your heart forward through the gate of your shoulders, and you want the eyes of your elbows, your elbow creases to go forward here, and external rotations so we can open up through the chest. And then from here, we're gonna exhale, start from the tailbone, tuck it under, move slowly, mindfully, start to round through the spine like a wave, chin to chest, and we drop the crown of the head down. And let's actually pause here for a moment. So actively press the earth away, we're doming up the upper back. Draw the belly in, so really draw the navel into the spine. And when you do that, when you feel that engagement of drawing the navel in, you should feel 
So I'm gonna kind of something happening, some sensation here, lower back, but the thoracic spine as well, the mid back. If it feels okay, maybe rock gently side to side, kind of like you're wagging your tail, all while tucking your tailbone under. And then let's flow. So coming back to center, inhale, dropping the belly, opening up the chest, arching the back cow pose. Exhale, slowly start to round into your cat. Good, and just keep moving with this for a few more rounds of breath. And take your time. Making it a moving meditation. Giving yourself permission to move slowly, no rush. Just like we've been doing, if there's parts of this movement that you feel called to hold a little longer and explore a little deeper with breath than others, honor that. As long as it feels good to you, there should be no pain. If it's painful, then please stop. It's important to deeply listen to the body and honor its needs, not forcing it into anything it doesn't feel called to do today. Let's take two more rounds of our cow, our calf. Let's move in through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Good, and then finishing up this round. And we come back into a flat back. Take a moment here. If your wrists are bothering you, which can happen, just rotate it out. The more that you spread your fingers, go ahead and switch when you're on your hands. The more you spread your fingers and root into the mounds of your fingers, so your knuckles, your finger pads, less weight will go into the wrist. That takes time. All right, so our next shape after that, after some, after some arching of the back, we're gonna now come into, okay, so now we're gonna move into a variation of child's pose with the knees together. So start to walk the knees a little closer together. They don't actually have to fully touch unless you get there and that feels okay. Tops of the feet are flat. And let's just shift our hips on top of our heels. So now we're gonna melt the belly on top of the thighs. And then we start to have the hands travel back behind us. And then we're gonna melt the forehead down. If your forehead does not touch the mat, feel free to grab the blanket if you'd like for some padding. Or you can use your hands. But try to have the hands back behind you because this also helps us kind of round through the shoulders a little bit more. So we're really essentially making this tiny little seed shape. So let's breathe here for five cycles of breath. So the other variation of child's pose, which I'm sure you're used to, is taking the knees out wide. But today, since we're focusing on the lower back, I decided to invite you into this shape instead because when our knees are out wide it's more focusing on the hip opening which is also connected to our lower back oftentimes when our hips are tight we have lower back pain but this variation helps us lengthen out through the lumbar spine makes it a little less intense so let the shoulders mount let the forehead rest you can even rock the forehead right to left, massaging the third eye center, the point between the eyebrows. Pressure point here, if you ever have headaches, make sure you rub this area. And then finding stillness, and just breathing deeply into this. And just noticing what sensations you're finding here. Exploring that sensation with each and every breath. Last three breaths in this shape. Modified child's pose.
very slowly. We're gonna start to take the hands out in front of us as we lift the forehead and gaze forward. So now from here, we transition into our next shape, coming up onto hands and knees first, and then you're gonna slowly start to bend the elbows, lower down to the belly, and start to send the legs back behind you a little bit more. So we're extending through the legs, tops of the feet are flat, and then we're gonna come up onto our forearms. So now we enter Sphinx Pose. One of my personal favorite shapes to focus on the region of the lumbar spine. Not only does this help, you know, not only open up through the chest and strengthen our shoulders here in Sphinx, but there is some upper body engagement. But what we're essentially doing here is we're rebalancing the curvature of the lower back. When we have a lot of sitting in our day, what tends to happen with sitting is that we start to flatten out through the lower back. So this shape, if you can't already feel it or just see when you look at the screen, is that we're bringing more of that curve back into the lower back, and that's important. When our lower back flattens out, that causes tension and pain, and that's no fun. Okay, so from here in Sphinx, start by having the shoulders over the elbows, and even here our hands are engaged, just spread the fingers. And feel yourself, feel as if you're pulling the mat to the back of your, where your feet are. So feel like you're pulling the mat that way without actually doing that, obviously. So we're shifting the elbows back towards the heels. And at the same time, you're feeling that lift and that light stretch in the belly, opening of the chest, collarbone smiling wide. If this is just way too much for you, if you're feeling some pinching in the lower back, and how we can adjust is just walking the hands farther forward in the same shape. You can also play with maybe taking the feet a little wider. Your hip width distance apart is too much. So start to soften through your pelvis here. Lift through the chest and breathe. So again, you should feel some compression here in the lower back, but it shouldn't be painful. If it's painful, then adjust. And if adjusting doesn't work for you, you just come out of it altogether. You can even just come down to your belly and rest like this because you're still getting that lumbar curve. So find what works for you. Full deep nourishing breaths here in Sphinx. <sighs> Letting the legs be heavy. Letting the pelvis soften to the earth as your heart lifts. Rebalancing the curvature of the lumbar spine. So this practice has not only been stretching, but it's also strengthening this part of our body. And it's good to have both, to balance it out. See if you can relax your jaw here, melt the point between the eyebrows, and you soften the outer edges of the eyes, and we're going to be here for five more full cycles of breath. See if you can work this shape into your daily practice. Really great pose to strengthen the lower back. Open up the chest, strengthening in the shoulders, the upper back. spine. I once heard this quote, a happy spine is a happy life. So here we honor our spine. Last two cycles of breath here in Sphinx. Perhaps sign the next exhalation out. slowly opening the eyes and we're going to make our way down to our belly after that 
From here, the counter pose that I really like to do is practicing out the arms wide. So cactus arms or goal post arms really. Try to get the elbows in line with the shoulder. So we'll start by taking the left cheek down. So you're looking at your right forearm. From here, you're gonna just slide your right knee up towards your right elbow. It does not need to touch. In fact, you wanna get your right knee in line with your right hip as much as you can, just like your right elbow is in line with your right shoulder. If this is too much on your left shoulder, then just take your left hand down by your left hip. The left palm would be facing up if you do that. So let's hold here, gently closing the eyes if you feel comfortable, or the soft gaze, and just breathe into this. I call this earth hug, because I feel like I'm hugging the earth. By drawing the knee up here towards the elbow, it helps release any tension caused from that longer hold in Sphinx, which is a back bend. So we use that back bend in Sphinx to strengthen the lower back. And now we use the shape Earth Hug to release any tension that might have accumulated from holding that shape a little bit longer. Again, it's always about finding the balance between effort and ease. Yin and yang. We'll be here for three more cycles of breath. Try to relax your jaw and soften your face. So now we're going to take our earth hug on the other side. So to get out of this first, let's slide that right leg back down. And let's just switch the gaze. So now we look over to the left, right cheek rests. If that left hand was down by the hip, come back into cactus arms. Remember, you want your left elbow in line with your left shoulder. And let's slide the left knee up. And try to get that left knee in line with your left hip. And your left foot is flexed. And since I did it on the other side and it might have been hard to see, I'll just do it here for you. If this is a lot in your right shoulder, which it might be, then just take your right hand down outside of your right hip, the right palm up. Otherwise, keep your arms like this and this is some nice shoulder opening. Wherever you choose to go, just be fully there and breathe. And notice what you feel on this side. Not only does this release help release tension in the lower back caused from the back bend, but it's also some gentle hip opening. Some people even call this half frog pose. Just find sensation and breathe into it. Explore that wherever you feel it. And just letting the belly Move towards the earth on each inhale and exhale, feel it drawing in towards the spine as the pelvis softens, the hips get a little heavier. Just a few more breaths here. slowly start to slide the left leg back where it was so we come back and we bring the gaze forward let's take our hands underneath the shoulders tuck your toes press to the knees and let's come into a downward facing dog so we won't be here very long so coming into this upside down v shape checking in your hands about shoulder width distance feet about hips width distance and add a little bend into the knees and feel the hips going high and your tailbone lengthening your spine up softening the shoulder so you want the outer edges of the armpits to point down or to rotate out so we get external rotation here in our shoulders opening up through the upper back chest 
hands are so really engaged and we continue spreading the fingers. Maybe take a couple even just like soft kind of bounces of the knees bent. That could feel maybe nice in the lower back or perhaps bend one knee at a time. Nice stretch for the hamstrings here. Maybe you want to get into the side body a little bit. So you drop the heels over to one side, maybe bend the knees as you stretch. But really just finding what feels good to you. Or maybe you just decide to hold it today. That's cool too. Wherever you choose to be, be all there. And let's take two more full cycles of breath in our downward dog. Remembering that it's more important that the spine stays long rather than the heels down. So if you need to keep the knees bent, just keep them bent. Back of the neck long. Good. Now from here, you're going to walk your hands towards your feet. So journey to the back of your mat. One of my favorite poses for the whole back body, especially just really lengthening out the whole spine. Walk your feet a little wider than your hips. Knees bent. So let your belly kiss the top of your thighs. And we're going to just start to fold and come into ragdoll. A lot of options here for the hands. One of my personal favorites is grabbing opposite elbows, adding a little bit of weight here. Let the crown of the head point down. Oftentimes we don't even realize that we're looking forward. Just let your head relax, your neck relax. And again, your knees are bent, so belly's just resting on top of the thighs. And just feel the natural decompression in your spine here. We're using gravity to go deeper into this, using the breath. Maybe you choose to rock side to side. Maybe you add a subtle bounce. Whatever it is that you need. We're gonna hang out here for a few rounds of breath. Keep the knees slightly bent. Feel free to straighten the legs only if your hamstrings invite you. For the sake of being more restorative and gentle, I'm gonna keep my knees bent just really allow my spine to surrender to gravity. So really try to envision each exhalation is creating space in between each vertebrae. Feel as if the crown of your head, the top part of your head is getting closer and closer to the ground. The back of the neck long, hinging from the hips and not the waist. Just breathe here. If you're swaying side to side, I invite you to start to come into stillness. You can continue holding opposite elbows, or maybe you just let your hands rest, palms up or down. And breathe. Get even heavier here. If this is too much for you, remember deep listening. Honor yourself where you're at. You can always take something underneath your head, maybe a couch cushion or pillow if you need to go grab that, but I think it's totally cool to just let it hang in space. Just try it. If your belly's really far away from your thighs and you're looking at this thinking, what the heck, how did she do that? Don't worry, don't compare. Meet yourself where you're at. This comes with time. And I do recommend doing this shape every day. I especially like to do this, this shape called ragdoll, right when I get out of bed. letting gravity do the work. Before I fight gravity all day, you stand up. So working with gravity. One more breath. Good, and then from here, we're gonna tuck our chin into our chest, press through the feet, maybe a deeper bend into the knees. Let's just start to roll it up. So ring out your spine, almost like a zombie roll. Bring it out, gaze is last. <sighs> All right, any movement you need after that, shake it out, wiggle it out, whatever it is, neck rotation, shoulder rotations, get funky. <sighs> okay, so now we're just gonna walk to the top of our mat. Or we're just gonna come down to a seat. So however you wanna do that, maybe just bend the knees, use your hands to come to a seat. And then we come back down to our back. So maybe even for the sake of adding some core work, since your core, strong core, strong front body is also indicative of a strong back body because our core wraps all the way around. 
then maybe we get some core work in. So why not? Let's just do this. Feet are hips distance, reach through the fingers, lift the heart. Try not to use your hands, but if you need to, you can use your hands. Maybe grab hold of the back of the thighs. A little bit of core work for the practice, not too much. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, slowly start to go back. And let's pause here. So draw the shoulder blades down the back. Maybe palms go up a little bit more here. Keep the feet pressing into the mat. Another breath. And let's keep going. Now we start to slowly kind of round through the spine. Feel the core a little shake a little here and pause wherever you are. Breathe. So you should feel some burn here, some engagement. One more breath. Oh, and all the way down. All right, from here we're gonna do what we've been doing. We did this a couple times today. Pick the feet up, cross the fingers on the outside of the shins, or if that's too much, you can just hold the back of the thighs. Maybe you start to rock side to side, massaging the muscles of the lower back. Ooh, maybe rotate out your ankles. I think my ankle needed that. I don't know if you heard that pop. Oh gosh. It's not a bad thing. I think that's just air being released. And then maybe even lifting the forehead this time. If you haven't done this one already, grab hold of opposite elbow, forehead to knee. Big hug, big squeeze, thanking yourself again for carving out this time in your day, honoring your whole body, but also focusing on your lower back. Beautiful, and then coming down to the earth. We're almost done. Shavasana is right around the corner. But before we do that, let's take the feet down to the ground. Your knees are pointing up, toes are pointing forward. And from here, walking the heels slightly in so they're about in the reach of your fingertips. So make sure you can put your heels. From here, we're gonna pick our right foot up and gently start to cross the right ankle over the top of the left thigh, right above the left knee. So we're moving into reclined pigeon. Sometimes it's referred to as figure four. What's important to note here is that you do want your shoulder blades to stay gliding down the back. So you wanna avoid lifting up. We'll start here first for a couple breaths, maybe this is enough for some of you. We're focusing on hip opening. We're opening up through the right hip here, as well as the outer right thigh and the right glute. The reason why we're focusing on hip opening in regards to the lower back is because oftentimes lower back pain is caused by tight hips. When the hip muscles are shortened, they will pull on the lower back, causing pain and tension. So it's important to know that it is all connected and that by opening up through the hips, we're inevitably really focusing on the lower back. Okay, so that being said, no more talking, deep breathing, here we go. So let's just stay here for a couple breaths. If you wanna increase sensation, maybe take the blanket if you have it nearby. You could even fold it an extra amount to elevate that left foot off the mat a little more. Hang out here for a couple breaths. Flex that right foot to protect your knee joint. You can even use your right hand to lightly move the right knee away. But again, you don't want the upper back to lift here. Now, if you want to continue exploring this shape further, I invite you to pick up the left foot off the mat. And now we take this right hand through the keyhole that you created with your right leg and see if you can clasp the fingers in the back of the left thigh to start. Remember, you want your sacrum, your lower back, to stay grounded so the spine is long. Also, the shoulder blades drawing down the back so we're drawing the legs towards us rather than the other way around. So you don't wanna be here. If you're struggling to hold the back of the thighs, and maybe we just release the foot today and just let the hands rest and just come back to this shape. But we are all working on moving the right knee away from the chest, so try to avoid it collapsing in. This is how you're gonna find the opening in that right hip. And breathe. For those that are here with me with the left foot lifted, keep flexing the left foot as well as the right, protecting the knee joints. And we're not forcing the left knee in, but rather just a gentle pressure inward and we breathe deeply here. If 
your right elbow is near the inner right thigh. Maybe see if you can use your right elbow to press the knee away from you a little bit, only if that feels okay to you in your body today. So again, here we're focusing on opening up through the right hip, the outer right thigh, just getting a nice stretch as well as the right glute. Our tailbone, our lower back is on the floor, our spine is long, and our head is resting here. Five more cycles of breath. Last couple of breaths, maybe interlace the fingertips on top of the left shin if your body invites you to do so. All without lifting the shoulders off the mat. Beautiful. Now slowly we start to bring that left foot back to the earth. If there was something once underneath your foot, go ahead and move it up to the side. We're going to add one more thing here on this side before we take the same sequence on the other side. So from here, you're just going to cross your right thigh on top of your left, so it's just like you're pressing your legs when you're in a seat, opening up your arms wide like wings, and if you want to focus even on adding the shoulder opening even more, then cactus the arms again. So earlier you did this on your belly, and now you cactus the arms on your back, only if this feels okay. Now we're gonna do another spinal twist, just a different variation here with our eagle legs. Your right toes can be free. You don't need to wrap the right toes underneath unless that feels okay to you. I think for the sake of being more restorative, let's just keep the right ankle floating with the outside of the leg. Now we're gonna lift the hips just like you did when we did the spinal twist earlier. If you remember, we'll scoot the hips over to the right, drop them down, and from here with our eagle legs, just drop the knees to the left. So this is a more increased version, increase of sensation in our spinal twist. If you find that this is just not working out for your hips, then obviously uncross them and come back into what you did earlier, just having the knees stagger, feet stagger. Or before you fully let go of it, maybe take that blanket or towel if it's nearby and just use it to pad that right knee. So giving it some gentle support important to note that we want the shoulder blades on the floor, sliding down the back, especially this right shoulder. So if the right shoulder is lifted really high, bring it back down. And that might mean that the knees come up. That's okay. Take the gaze where your neck feels the most supported. And let's take five cycles of breath here in this variation of our spinal twist. nourishing breaths, little love notes being sent from yourself to your body. twists are a really great practice to do in your day-to-day. -day. Not only do they help increase mobility of our spine, strengthen our spine, especially the region of the lower back, but here with this variation, with the legs crossed, we add the hip opening aspect, which I mentioned earlier, hip opening is directly connected to lower back pain, or rather lower back release. When our hips feel a little bit more open, we have more mobility in our hips. Our lower back has more mobility, more freedom, more space. One more breath here. Good. For those that are looking off to the side, bring your gaze back up to center. And slowly start to pick the knees back up. Uncross the legs. Hips come back to center. And our rebound here is going to take be with our feet wide, knees together. So this is how we started the practice. Take the arms in whatever variation feels comfortable to you, up above, to the side, or on the body. And let's breathe here. 
the feet are wide, about mass distance, knees are resting on one another. This should be familiar to you. This is how we started the class. As we move towards the end, we revisit it again. With each and every inhalation, feel your sacrum, your lower back pressing into the earth. With each exhalation, feel the rest of the body get even heavier as it melts, as it softens. Together, we'll take a deep breath in through the nose, fill all the way up with air. Big open mouth, sigh out. Feeling the knees apart, walk the feet back to hips distance. Remember, make sure that you can touch your heels here. And we're going to take the same sequence on the other side, starting with recline figure four, recline pigeon. So here we pick up the left ankle, bending the left knee, cross the left ankle on top of the right thigh, right above the right knee. Remember, you can stay right here. You can choose to elevate the right foot a little higher with the use of that prop that you have, a blanket or towel or something else. Important that we flex the left foot here and feel the left knee moving away. You can even use your left hand to apply a gentle pressure. And try not to push on the knee itself. Use the hand on the thigh. The knee, uh, knees are really sensitive joints, so it's important to really take care of them. We'll take a couple breaths here. remembering that you can stay here or release the left hand and instead take it through that keyhole you created, clasp the fingers to the back of the right thigh. Now both feet flex. Remember you can use the left elbow to lightly move the left knee away from you. We're not forcing it. And we use the help of the hands, the fingers that are clasped to pull the right knee in. Shoulders are drawing down the back, head is resting, our neck is long. Our whole spine is on the ground here. So your lower back is pressing into the earth and your tailbone should feel like it's an anchor. So you don't want to feel like you're rolling backwards. That's important to know. And let's breathe here. Relaxing your face, softening through the jaw, and sending your loving awareness here to your hips, knowing that your hips, the happiness of your hips is related to the happiness of your lower back. It's all connected. like to seek more sensation and explore even further, clasp the fingers on top of that right shin without compromising the shoulders here. Keep the shoulders resting on the earth, shoulder blades gliding down the back. Maybe lightly drawing the right knee in as you lightly press the left knee away. Remember it's about sensation, not pain. So this is painful in your left hip. And we just soften out of it, release a little bit. Keep yourself wherever you are today. Stretching through the left hip here, the outer left thigh, the left glute. Just a few more cycles of breath here, almost done. Focusing on your breath, regardless of whatever external sounds you hear, and just really allowing your breath to be your guide, your soundtrack, your point of focus. Even if you hear some crazy sawing sounds, <laughs> you're hearing that in my video. They're doing construction outside, if you couldn't already tell. Stay with me. Makes it more interesting, right? 
All right, releasing that foot down. So right foot comes back to the earth. If there was something once under, just move it to the side. And then we enter our last spinal twist. Left thigh crosses over. Remember, just keep that left ankle kind of floating on the outside. You don't need to wrap it around like you would an eagle. Keep it a little bit more restorative and gentle. Arms open up. And again, actually, if you can, before you settle in, move the blanket over to the right. You're probably gonna use it here if you're still on the other side. Arms open up wide like wings. Scoot the hips to the left, and we gently drop the knees to the right. You can perhaps use the blanket to pad the left knee, like so. Or if you don't want to do that's okay, you can just let it hang. But this might be a little bit more restorative for you. Take the gaze where it feels best, whether to the left fingertips, straight up, or maybe to the right. <sighs> Check in with that left shoulder, make sure it's still drawing down towards the earth. Heart opening here, maybe your heart is smiling here as you thank yourself once again for carving out this time in your day. To slow down, to breathe a little deeper, and to really truly honor your body through these movements, especially the region of the lower back. Thanking your spine for all that it does for you each and every day. All the activities that you enjoy. That wouldn't be possible without a healthy, strong spine. Remembering that these are practices that you can do each and every day. I highly encourage you to do them. Even if it's not the whole video, maybe just finding a couple that you really enjoyed, that you can incorporate into your day-to-day -day practice, knowing that these shapes will really help keep your whole body, specifically your spine, happy and healthy. The last few cycles of breath in our spinal twist here on the right. rather the left. <laughs> Maybe sighing out your next exhalation when it comes. <sighs> and if the gaze was to the side, bring it back to center. Lifting the knees back up once again, hip scoop to the middle of the mat, we uncross the legs. And before our final rest, let's extend the legs straight up. I like to use the hands here if you want to try this, just massaging the front of the legs, tops of the legs, and then the back. Maybe giving your hips a little bit of a squeeze and some love. This would be a nice time to rotate out the ankles, flex and plate the feet, wiggle the toes. And let's just take a moment here. This is an inversion that I really enjoy doing right before rest. Just allow the arms to Rest alongside the body, perhaps palms up. And what we're doing here is just allowing all the blood to flow down in towards the heart, giving our heart some more love, nourishment, energy, giving our legs a break. So this is a nice practice to do if you stand a lot through the day or you have restless legs. In Sanskrit, we call this Viparita Karani, waterfall pose, or legs up the wall pose. You can do this on the wall if you'd like. Or just let your legs float in space. Just focus on your breath, just as you've been doing the whole practice. With each inhalation, feel your sacrum, your lower back, just really pressing into the earth. Each exhale, feel your legs get even wider as you release any tension that might still be lingering, whether they be in the legs, the hips, the lower back, or somewhere else. We'll do that three more times. Inhale, filling all the way up, lower back presses into the mat. Exhale, releasing any lingering tension. Last breath, fill all the way up with air, feel the belly rise, the rib cage expand and the heart lift. 
and sigh it out, let it all go. Slowly start to bend the knees, gently release the feet to the earth, releasing one leg at a time as you find your way into your final resting position. If you have the blanket nearby, something I can offer you that might feel really nice is to roll up the blanket. You'll have to lift up a little, engage the core to come up, and just rolling it so that you can elevate your knees. If you want, you can even pause the video for a moment and just go get a couch cushion or a pillow, something a little higher if you want, but a blanket will do, or the towel. And once you come back to your back, tuck in the shoulder blades, down the back once again, arms open up to the side, maybe go a little wider in a full active surrender. And let's just take a nice cleansing breath together here to settle in for our final rest. Once you've found the shape, take a deep breath in, big sigh out. Good. And just start to allow this wave of relaxation, the act of letting go, to flow over not only your physical body here in this shape, but also your mind. Give yourself permission to rest. And remember that regardless of any external sounds, if you can hear the sawing in my video, I apologize. I think this is a test from the universe, not only to you, but to me, to not give up. But really, I guess this is a really nice teaching moment reminder that no matter what's happening in our external world, no matter how much tension, stress, unease starts to come about, that what really matters is how we decide to show up internally. Do we choose to react to the external world through emotions? We choose to respond from the heart. Just continue allowing yourself to respond from the heart center through each and every breath. Letting your body get heavy as it settles into the earth allowing gravity to guide you down even further. And just continue softening through the mind, softening through this physical vessel, softening any tension that might still be lingering. And just using your breath to guide you deeper and deeper into this moment right now. Relaxing your jaw, softening your cheeks, the outer edges of your eyes, the point between the eyebrows. Just let it all start to soften and relax. Remember, you can stay here as long as you need, way beyond the video. It's all about deep listening, keeping yourself wherever you are today, wherever you are right now. If you choose to come up, slowly start to wiggle your fingers, your toes keeping the eyes still gently closed, maintaining that internal gaze, that focus of rest and relaxation inside. We start to wake up the outer layers of the body. If it feels okay in your shoulders, reach the arms up and overhead. If you draw the legs together, take a nice big stretch. Maybe even open and close the hands a couple of times. 
and softly just start to release the hands alongside the body. The arms come down. You can move whatever was once under your knees to the side if you can reach it. And before we come up, let's pick the feet off the mat once again. Give yourself another big hug. Forehead towards knees if you can. Big squeeze. And release the head. Just like we did earlier in the practice, hands travel to the back of the thighs. Let's take a couple of rocks up and down. Massaging the spine, coming back up with some more energy, getting ready for whatever else you have planned for the day. If you're doing this at night, just giving yourself the energy to get ready for bed. And we come all the way up. So coming to your final seat, feel free to sit up on top of the blanket or towel for support. Settling in here, relaxing the shoulder blades down the back once again. Sitting up tall, take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just take a brief moment here. With your eyes gently closed, the gaze inward and just scanning your body just like we did in the beginning of this practice to notice how you feel. Without any judgment, any expectation, just notice. I invite you to bring the hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra, Salutation Seal, sitting up really tall, lightly lifting the heart to meet the thumbs, and just allowing this gesture of salutation to be an act of you, again, thanking yourself, honoring yourself for all that you just did, all that you'll continue to do. Together, we take another final deep breath in, and final sigh out. <sighs> Gently bowing the head towards the fingertips. From my heart to yours. Namaste.